Hello everyone, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series receives a plot tutorial as using Matplotlib in Python. Now in this tutorial, we'll be looking at plot animations. Now let's say you have some data which changes with time and you want to see how the data is changing with time or you have some data that uh, you know gets continuously updated in real time and you want to animate them so that or you have to enable them to have a real, real time plotting. Okay, in these kind of situ situations, uh, the animation features uh, in any programming languages are helpful. Now in this tutorial, I'll be talking to you about the plot animations, as in how you can make some simple animations so with, with your existing data, in the, in the form, in the, how you can animate your plot in a simple manner using some of the basic stuff that we learned so far. Okay, and uh, as an example, I've taken the one dimensional heat equation. So for those of you who do not know, a heat equation is actually a parabolic dif partial differential equation that describes how heat in a substance uh, flows over time. So for uh, for instance, uh, in a simple in a simple terms, in simple terms, if there are no he heating variables, let's say there are no heating variables, let's say a heat sources or heat sinks or anything like that, then the uh, a three dimensional heat equation looks like this: dou u by dou t uh, minus alpha times dou square u by dou x square plus dou square u by dou y square plus dou square u by dou z square equals zero. If there is no heat source in it. Heat source in it. Um, but um, is suppose if for a one dimensional heat equation uh, since there are uh, there are no, no two dimensions over here like so the this term the term with y in it and the, with the, the variation with respect to z these two cancel out we're leaving only a small equation over here so uh, this if this equation uh, is what we're going to take today and we're going to plot uh, we're going to use this equation and apply it on a rod having a sinusoidal temperature difference and see how it's going to happen now the, the animation that we're going to get is kind of similar to this uh, this is what this is what happened over here. Here they had a time interval uh, temperature distribution that varied uh, that that actually varied. Uh, it was initially high at high at one end, low at other end, and as time progressed, the temperature nullified. The temperature nullified. Here we're going to get a similar animation like this, but the only thing is we're going to use what you call as a sine curve as the uh, sine curve as an initial temperature, initial temperature profile. All right. So let's get started. First, what we need to do is uh, this equation. Is, I'm going to apply this equation for a rod. So I'm just going to keep the rod length to be 100, and I'm going to have like 101 points. I mentioned 100 over here, but I'm going to have 101 points in the entire rod. Okay, and I'm going to simulate this for 500 seconds, and the number of time steps I'm going to give is is actually 500. So I'm going to in a, I'm going to simulate this uh, for after for after every one second using finite difference methods. Okay, and this would be the diffusion coefficient, diffusion coefficient of the rod or rod of my choice. Okay, and here I'm going to define the length, define all the points in the rod. So I'm going to define if I just keep hundred, I'm just going to keep hundred and one points in the rod. But with this configuration, the and the d and the dis, dx, the distance between the rods is since they are uniform, it's going to be constant, and it's here as of now it will be 0 0.1 meters. You can consider 0 0.1 meters um, meters as it is over here. Yeah, I'm just assuming the SI units here. Similarly, the time steps over here will be between 0 to 500. Uh, so the time step is actually one second, and this f is actually the f is actually a diffusion parameter. Like if you write the finite difference equation of this uh, equation for um, the diffusion parameter, I mean, for this uh, one dimensional heat equation, you will get a parameter like alpha times dt divided by dx square. Okay, and that is actually this diffusion parameter which I'm going to keep it as constant f. Okay, and this is the value of it. Okay, the reason I'm calculating is because this will come again and again in the equation. So you calculate it once and use the values afterwards. And similarly, there's another term constant that comes in the equation, in the one and the numerical finite difference equation. And that's called as I'm going to call, call it as fac, which is actually one minus two times this f factor over here. Oh, all right. Now with this, we got this. Let's set the initial condition. The initial condition is that it's going to be a sine wave such that in the length of the rod, okay, the, from the from from the center to, from the one end from the left end till the middle, I'm just going to have a temperature profile such that it's going to uh, it's going to sh shoot. Uh, it's going to start. It's going to have 100 degrees Celsius at the center. I mean at two at around 2.5 um, uh, around 25 percent of its length and it's going to grow um, go by, you know go towards zero at both ends I mean at the, at the left end as well as the middle 
and uh, and the and the other end is going to be zero again. But in the sa- at the around seventy five percent of its length, I'm going to keep the temperature to be minus hundred. We you will notice what you will notice what this means. I'm just going to put a sine wave on this entire length on this entire length for the temperature, and then. I create an old temperature va- array and a new temperature array, and this is going to be a copy of this initial temperature array. So this I'm just going to copy that, and over here I just um, the, the, from here on we're going to do the plotting, plotting and the animation. So um, to make the plot uh, uh, change, uh, to make sure that the plot happens interactively in the sense you you should be able to change the data every now and then continuously. Okay, during the pro- during the progress of the program. Uh, I have to enable. I have to use this option over here. We call as plt dot i o n. I just call as interactive plot on. Okay, it just means interaction on. I o i o n means interaction on. So I put this. Uh, it's opened up, and then I just uh, I'll start with an empty figure, and this figure will be updated in the for loop over here. So in this for loop, what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm just going to uh, update. Have all the finite difference. Have all the temperatures in each and every point using finite difference methods. I'm just using the I mean, normal for forward time forward time scheme, forward time backward space scheme. I guess. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to use that, and uh, I just made some simplifications and uh, simplifications so that it does not go into two loops. Okay. I mean, I just made it compact so that it does not go into two loops. But if you take a piece of paper and work this out, this will be. This will be the diffusion equation, the numerical method stuff. All right, and then I'm just make sure that I'm just replacing the old. I mean, the new. Va- I'm just replacing the old values with the current new values so that uh, I can go for the next uh, next round of iterations. Nothing more than that. So these are actually the housekeeping part. Okay, that is the actual. I mean, this is this is actually the housekeeping part and the most important part. And next is actually the fun part. That is where we're going to plot. First, what I'm going to do since I put this in a for loop. First, I'll just put this plt dot clf. This will clear the entire figure. This command will clear the entire figure. So if you have any like anything like axis, lines, title, or any kind of a plot drawn on it, this command will clean everything and leave you a empty canvas, empty figure with nothing in it. Okay. So every time I run this loop, it will just clean up and then it will and then it will plot this. It will put the plot this line over here. This line will actually plot the initial temperature profile. Initial temperature. Profile, and and uh, below this we'll get uh, we'll we we'll plot the new temperature profile that the in the current temperature profile and the old one will be in black color whereas the new one will be in a in a kind an orange color this XKCD salmon color is actually kind of an orange okay so we're going to plot uh, in this in the in the salmon color and afterwards we're just going to uh, these are just for you know to make the plot a little more fancy I'm just going to add a label. Uh, label and then I'm going to put a temperature and I'm use the LaTeX notations over here. I'll talk about LaTeX notations in another video. This just put this just means that it says temperature in degree Celsius and this x uh, power sim power symbol and carrot symbol and an O is just to make sure that you have the degree sign on the uh, temperature. And I just put the title simple title and here over here I'm just going I'm just creating a string that says time I just it will print out the time. Maximum temperature, maximum temperature in the rod, and the minimum temperature in the rod with the proper un with the proper units, and the, this this string will have this entire le- le- string, and I'm going to copy this and kp I mean paste it uh, paste in the super title so that uh, you'll get a continuously updating figure. Uh, I mean uh, for every time the figure updates, you'll get a timestamp and the maximum minimum temperature stamps on the on it, and I enable a legend so that we get these labels. Properly, and then I enable add the grid, and to make sure that uh, the I mean the entire plot does not vary dynamically. To make the plot static, I just put the uh, I just uh, specify the axis, and the axis uh, axis coordinates to the by making it rigid. So I'm setting the axis between minus point one and to ten point one about the x-axis, and I'm setting the y-axis limits to be between minus one hundred and five degrees Celsius and plus one hundred and five degrees Celsius, and uh, this would this would perfectly work. <coughs> this would perfectly work, okay. Um, uh, the only thing, okay. I just put this pass because I put this pass because if you run this, you'll get this figure. You'll get this uh, figure over here. It will just keep on update and update and update and update, and uh, you'll get the time going on here. It just it just goes on till it ends. It's going to end at 500 seconds. So it's going on until that. But if you hear see over here, you don't see any animation, and that's because we didn't. We just had to give a little bit of time 
so that uh, we can see the plot ourselves. So if I close this, it's not going to be closed. I just have to terminate the program. But um, yeah, yeah, I close this. This will terminate the program. And now I just add, add to had to put this pass a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to pass for like a point one second or one centisecond. Okay, point that should be just about enough to you know halt all this process thereby we can see what's happening. And now if I run this code, check this out. Sweet. Now we have the initial temperature profile in black and the current temperature profile at any time instant um, changing changing over here, which is actually an orange color. Now this way you have an idea. Uh, you have and uh, you have done some kind of a real time animation suppose if you have some data that is giving you on a, that is continuously updating values in real time and you want to see how those data is how the data is being plotted up something like that this will help you a lot okay now hope you guys understood this and this is not this is, this may look a little complicated but it's actually pretty simple if you go in deep if you just go a little carefully all right and this is this is uh, this is my video on how to do a little simple animation using map using Python uh, for any, for a da for data that continuously changes with time. And that's all I have for you all in this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time in another interesting video. Till then, take care.